So what is a matrix? You don't need to know the definition of a matrix, but I'll still tell you what is a matrix. A matrix is like a, a set of numbers that have a particular order or have a, have a particular format. The format of a matrix, if it is that you were to name a matrix or state the order or the form of a matrix, it is stated in the form row by column. What we mean by that? It means that how many elements, the elements are the numbers or the elements are whatever is inside the brackets that is termed the elements. And you have different amount of elements inside those brackets is not fixed. So because the elements are not fixed, different matrices would have different orders. And in order to find the order of a matrix, we state the number of rows that the matrix has and the number of columns. And once as you state it in this order, this gives us the order of the matrix. So I'll give you an example of it. Let's say matrix A is the, the matrix consisting of the elements 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 7. And rows are, are the elements that goes horizontally. So I just write on top the lines indicate what rows are. All right, so rows are, are horizontal. So think of it as what, when it is in a classroom and you all are arranged in rows, rows are like horizontal. And columns are like the, the posts in your house. Columns are vertical. So you, you want to state from the matrix A, you want to state the order of matrix A. And in order to state the order of matrix A, we need to state how much rows of elements that we have. The amount of rows that we have in this matrix, we have one row, which consists of five, four, three, and the next row consists of two, one, seven. So we have two rows, and the amount of columns that we have, we have, I'll use the, the black to illustrate how much columns. We have one, two, three. So we have two rows and we have three columns. So this here is termed a two by three matrix. So that is the order. Each matrix has a particular order. So this is a two by three matrix. So let's say I use in matrix Y as our next example. Matrix Y is the matrix four, minus one, three, and seven. Now this matrix, if it is that you all were to state the order of this matrix or the form of this matrix, remember it's row by column. Remember RC. How many rows does this matrix have? Well, we see that this, this matrix here has one row, which is four minus one. And the next row is three, seven. So it has two rows. How many columns does this matrix has? It has the first column consists of the elements four and three. So that's the first row. And the next row consists of the elements minus one, seven. So that's the second. That's the first column, the second column. Four, three is the first column. Minus one, seven is the second column. So each row and column has two. It has two rows and two columns. Once as you have the same amount of rows and the same amount of columns, this is called a square matrix. So the term given to this is a square matrix. So this matrix, this matrix contains same number of rows and columns. So that's the definition for that. It's called a square matrix. Now, later on, you all would learn this term, what this term stands for. You will learn about determinant, you will learn about adjoint, and you will learn about finding the inverse of a matrix. These things, determinant, adjoint, and inverse, only involves a square matrix. And in CXC, is only a two by two matrix is the maximum that they would reach. So that's that is what the maximum that they would test you on. Later on in form six, they would test you on three by three and four by four and whatever. But in CXC, they only limit you to a two by two matrix. So they cannot give you a three by three matrix to find the inverse and the determinant of. There's only two by two matrices that they can ask you about in terms of finding the determinant and the adjoint and the inverse. So later on, as in these questions here, you would see that most of the questions are based on a two by two matrix, which is called a square matrix, where they, they have the same number of rows and the same number of columns. So that's the first thing you need to know. The order of a matrix and what a square matrix is. Now the first, well, the second part is,
So this worksheet here is about the operations involving matrices and the different operations that we have in matrices. That is like the simple operations um, where we, we add, subtract, and multiply. These are the three operations that we could do with our matrix. So addition and subtraction, that explains itself in a way that when it is that you're adding and subtracting matrices, you can only add and subtract matrices that have the same order, meaning that you can only add and subtract matrices that have the same number of elements in that particular order or that particular format. So you see how X is a two by two matrix and Y is a two by two matrix. You could only add or subtract those two matrices because they have the same order. You cannot add, you see how we have matrix A here, five, four, three, two, one, seven. You cannot add matrix A to matrix Y because they are of a different order, of a different format. So think of it as this. If it is that you take the entire matrix and you place it over our next matrix, if the numbers line up, then we know that those matrices have the same order because the numbers line up. So we have corresponding elements in the matrix. So let's say we're using the same, the same example as in question one. Afterwards, we come back to these, these questions that they give us here. That's just for you to do. I just use an X as minus two, zero, five, one, Y as four, minus one, three, seven. In my example, when explaining it. So the first one is addition and subtraction. Now the explanation for addition and subtraction basically is the same. The only difference is that when it is that you're adding, you would have the addition sign. When subtracting, you have the subtraction sign and you would add and subtract corresponding elements. So if it is that we have X is equal to the matrix minus two, zero, five, one. And we have y is equal to the matrix 4, minus 1, 3, 7. We can add and subtract these matrices. So for the first example, you can ask us to find x plus y. To find x plus y, we add the corresponding element. So look at what is the corresponding element. The first element is minus 2. So the first element is added to the first element, which is 4. If it is I ain't good with, with negative numbers, you can use your calculator. Minus 2 plus 4. Minus two plus four, you get two. Positive two. Remember, once as the signs are different, you subtract the numbers and you keep the sign of the bigger number. So if it is that is minus two plus four, minus two plus four, the signs are different. Subtract the numbers. Four minus two is two, and you keep any sign of the bigger number. The bigger number is four, so therefore you keep a positive sign. But you don't need to show that this number is positive because a plus is understood in front of it. Right, so you can think of it as this. Once as the signs are the same, you add the numbers and maintain the same signs. So the next one, you have zero plus minus one. So we have zero, which is your second element, plus minus one. Zero plus minus one. A plus by a minus is a minus. So we get zero minus one. You get minus one. So we have minus one here. The next one, we have five, and this one, we have three. So five plus three, we get eight. And then this one, we have one and seven. That is the fourth element. So the fourth element in each of the matrix, they are added together. One plus seven, we get eight as well. So this is how we add matrices. Corresponding elements are added. Let's say they had asked us an example two. They had asked us to find the matrix Y minus X. Y minus X, they put the matrix Y first. So y would have been four minus one, three, seven, minus matrix X's minus two, zero, five, one. As I told you, you could use your calculator in these questions. So four minus minus two. So I'll do it to the side here. Four minus minus two. A minus by a minus is a plus. So we get four plus two, we get six. In your calculator, what it is actually you put in a negative sign in front of a number, you use it, the button that has the plus or the minus on it. That is only if it is that you put in a negative sign in front of a number. If it is that you're subtracting numbers, you use the subtraction sign. So that is the difference. Plus or minus is the button where it is that you want to put a negative sign in front of a number. And the subtraction button is if it is that you're subtracting two. So don't use this minus sign when you want to put a minus sign in front of the number. Use the plus or minus button. Minus one, minus zero. Minus one, minus zero, you get minus one. 
3 minus 5. 3 minus 5, we get minus 2. And 7 minus 1, we get 6. So in a nutshell, when it is that you're adding and subtracting matrices, we add and subtract matrices, whereby the corresponding elements are added and subtracted. So the first element added or subtracted to the first element, second to the second, two to the third, and four to the fourth. So you have a specific order when it is that you're adding and subtracting matrices. You don't just go randomly and select different elements and add and subtract it. You have a specific order for that. So if you want, you could take a note on this. The next operation, which is the main operation, is that of matrix multiplication. So take a note oh. of In matrix multiplication, we have two parts. The first part of matrix multiplication is where it is that the entire matrix is multiplied by a fixed number. They call that scalar multiplication. Scalar meaning that um, you multiply by a scalar or a number or a constant. That is the different rules that they use for a number. So scalar multiplication, they could ask us to find probably they give you a matrix X. All right, so let's say they give you a matrix X is the same matrix minus two, zero, five, one. And they ask it to probably find 2x. 2x means that you multiply by the scalar, 2 or the number, 2 or the constant, 2 is the same thing. All those words mean the same thing as a number. So you multiply the whole of matrix x by the number in front, of it, which is 2. So 2 multiplied by minus 2, 2 multiplied by 0, 2 multiplied by 5, and 2 multiplied by 1 would give us these numbers respectively. 2 by minus 2 is minus 4. 2 by 0 is 0. Anything by 0 is 0. 2 by 5, we get 10, and 2 by 1, we get 2. And this is our scalar multiplication. All the elements, are multiplied by the constant. And in this case, the constant is 2. Constant is the number in front of x. But they, didn't, they won't ask us, it's so simple, you know, but it leads up to the question that they would ask us eventually. So they can make scalar multiplication and addition and subtraction, so as in this case, in part E. So you see how they have 2x minus y? You would need to know how you find for 2x. You multiply the entire of x by 2. And when you get that answer, you take away y from it. So this leads up to the actual question that CX would ask. So all you need to know, once as you have a number in front of a matrix, you multiply all the elements inside that matrix by the number in front. That is called scalar multiplication. The next type of multiplication is called matrix multiplication. Now, matrix multiplication, that is when it is that you multiply a matrix by a matrix. So an example of this, let's say we're using the same matrix, we're using x is equal to minus 2, 0, 5, 1. And you're using matrix y, which is 4, minus 1, 3, and 7. And let's say they ask us to find part 1. They ask us to find the matrix y, x. So you want to find the matrix y, x. The first letter that we see in here is y. So we write out that matrix, which represents y. The matrix that represents y is 4, minus 1, 3, 7, multiplied by the matrix x, which is the second letter. That will be minus 2, 0, 5, 1. One thing to note is that the order it's, it's, it has a particular order. So if it is that they want to find y multiplied by x, then the matrix y has to be first, and then the matrix x. Because if it is that you mix up the order, or you made a mistake when it is that you're doing it, instead of writing y first, you write x first, then the answer would be wrong. Because in matrix multiplication, matrix multiplication is not commutative. Meaning that if you change up the order, you wouldn't get the same answer for everything. So if you find y, x, you will get one answer. And if you find x, y, you will get an answer that is different. The elements would be different. So that is our next thing that we come to. Matrix multiplication is not commutative. When it is that we are multiplying matrices, we multiply matrices in the same form where it is that we, are ident we identify them with. 
So that form is rho by column. So we multiply each of the rho in matrix Y by each of the columns. So we take the first row. The first row is the row four minus one. And you multiply by the first column. So the first row is multiplied by each of the columns. So we will get in our, in our order. Take the first row, multiply by the first column, and then you multiply by the second column. So let me show you how we're doing that. When it says that you take the first row, the first element in the row is multiplied by the first element in the column. So we multiply four by minus two, and four by minus two, we get minus eight. Then the second element in the row is multiplied by the second element in the column. So minus one multiplied by five, you get minus five. So that is the first row and the first column. So we could, be, I could just label it here, row one, column one. Then afterwards now, you take the first row and you multiply by the second column. So if you take the first row and multiply by the second column, we could call that row one, column two. So I just label it in it first. So when it is you're doing it, you wouldn't mix it up. You wouldn't put the, the elements that you get all about in your answer. Row by column, first row by the second column, you take the first element, which is four, and multiply by the first element in the column, which is zero. So four by zero, anything by zero is zero. Minus one by one, minus one by one, you get minus one. All right, so that's row one by column one, row one by column two. So the first row is multiplied by each of your columns. Then after that, now, I'm working on different column, I'm working on kind of brown. You take the second row. The second row is three, seven. What it is that you take this row now, you do the same thing. You multiply this row by each of your column. So row two, multiply by column one. And then row two, multiply by column two. So you take the row, three, seven, and multiply by the column minus two, five. Three by minus two, we get minus six. Seven by five, we get 35. So we get minus six plus 35. Then we take the same row, which is row two and multiply by column two, zero, one. So three, seven is multiplied by zero, one. Take the first element, which is three in the row and multiply by the first element in the column, which is zero. Three by zero, we get zero. And then the second element by the second element, seven by one, we get seven. So picture this. You take three, seven, and you put it over zero, one. So you turn it and you put it over zero, one. You see the numbers that line up, that is the numbers that you will be multiplying. So if it is I take three, seven, and place it over zero, one, three and zero lines up, so multiply three and zero. Seven and one lines up, so you multiply seven and one. And when it is that you don't need to identify what you're multiplying here, you see how I put row one, column one, row one, column two, row two, column one, and row two, column two. You, you don't need to identify that for the examiner. I just put it here, how is the first one I work in? So you always see what exactly that we are multiplying and the specific order it fits in the answer. So the first term is when it is that you multiply row one by column one. The second term is where you multiply row one by column two. Your third term is where you multiply row two by column one. And your fourth term is where you multiply row two by column two. So that is the particular order it fits in the answer. Then when it is that you get this, you simplify it. So minus eight minus five, you get minus 13. Zero minus one, you get minus one. Minus six plus 35, minus six plus 35, when you will go that, you might get 29. And zero plus seven, you get seven. And this is how you multiply matrices, row by column. Right, so we will take out a, a while probably like two or three examples for you to get accustomed to it. Because when it is that you're doing it for you, it might look simple now, but when it is that you're doing it for yourself, you would see the minor mistakes that you're making. So by the second example, you would identify those mistakes. By the third examples, you would clear it up. So by the fourth example, now you're good to go. So the second example is the one that I would be giving you all to try for yourself. So you would identify what mistakes and where you're sticking when you're multiplying matrices. So take note of this for me. Let me just pause this recording. So let's attempt this. Amrit. All right. So you're multiplying row by column. 
Was the first row you see it in matrix X? Minus two, zero. Right, so we say minus two, zero. Multiply by the first column. What is the first column? No, that four, three. Four, three. So what it is that you multiply minus two, zero by four, three. The first element is multiplied by the first element. Second element by the second element. So we multiply minus two by four. When you multiply minus two by four, what you got? Minus eight. Minus eight. And when you multiply zero by three, what, we, what, what you got? Zero. Right, so everything, anything multiplied by zero, you get zero. All right, so well done. Amit. Yes, sir. You're multiplying the first row by the second column. So we take any first element in the first row, multiply by the first element in the second column. So we say minus two, multiply by minus one. What is minus two by minus one? Positive two. Positive two. And what's zero, which is your second term in your row, multiply by seven, which is your second term in your column. Zero. What is zero by seven? Zero. Zero. All right, so nice. So that's for the first row. Next person, Ariel Charles. Charles, the first step is on with your mic, eh? Yes, sir. Yeah, so tell me, where's your, where's your second row there? Five and one. Five and one. So we're taking five, one, and you're multiplying by the first column. So five, one, multiply by four, three. You're the first element in your row is multiplied by the first element in your column. So we say five multiply by four. Where's five by four, Charles? By fours. 20. 20. And then we say the second element, which is one, multiply by the second element, which is three. One by three, how much I got? Three. Three. All right, so that's for the second row by the first column. Remember, each of the rows has to be multiplied by each of your columns. So we take the first row and multiply by each of the column here. That's how we got the first two elements. After that, you take the second row and multiply by each of the columns. The next person, can I bowl on? You're taking five, one, and you multiply by minus one, seven. So five multiplied by minus one, bowl on. We got Can I? Negative, negative five. Negative five, and one multiplied by seven. What you got? Seven. Seven. And when you simplify this, minus eight plus zero, you got minus eight. Two plus zero is two. 20 plus three, 23. And minus five plus seven, you get positive two. And this is how, if you notice, x, y, the matrix x, y, we got minus eight, two, 23, and two. The matrix y, x, we got something completely different. So what this shows, this shows that since x, y, is not equal to yx, then matrix multiplication, because our next question that they could bring, they could ask you, show that matrix multiplication is not commutative. So because that the different matrices produce different elements, then that shows that it is not commutative. So you write it like this. Since xy is not equal, the symbol here, where equal sign with a street line passing through, it means not equal. So since xy is not equal to yx, then matrix multiplication is not commutative. Right, so that would have been the question after this, the shooter. This had no relation to, to this question that we did. I'm just showing you how it is that you prove that matrix multiplication is not commutative. You're right, xy is not equal to yx, and that alone shows that it's not commutative. Anybody got the matrix X, Y being minus 8, 2, 23, and 2? All those who got that, that answer? Me. Yes, Me.
Say is given the first element is two, the second element is three, the third element is two, and the fourth element is four. When finding your determinant, you multiply the first element by the fourth element. So two is multiplied by four, you get eight. Take away the, the determinant is the difference between those two elements when multiplied. So the first and the fourth, take away the second and the third. So you find the difference, so you subtract them. The second and the third element is three and two. When you multiply three and two, you get six. And when subtracted, eight minus six, you get two as a determinant. So that is the format for finding the determinant. So let me just write the steps at the side for you. Step one, multiply the first, multiply the first element by the fourth element or the last element. Step two, multiply the second element by the third element. And then step three, subtract both. So we see the first step, step one, take away step two, then subtract both. And that's how we find for the terminal. The next one is finding for the adjoint of our matrix. No work in blue. When finding for the adjoint of our matrix, now our next way of writing the determinant, they can write it as this, two lines and the letter in the middle. That means the determinant of E. So if they ask you find and they write it like this, that means the determinant. So they can either write DET, that means the determinant, or they give it a symbol. Two strokes or the letter inside. That means the determinant of that matrix. The next thing that they can ask you to find, or you need to find in order to find for the inverse of our matrix is the adjoint. So if you want to find for the adjoint of A, it's two steps, two simple steps that you do. The adjoint of A, the first step, step one, is that you swap the first and the fourth element, you swap it. So the order changes for those two elements. Instead of having two, four, you have four, two. And then the second step, you change the signs, change the signs of the second and third element. So for example, if it is that you have matrix A being two, three, two, four, and following this, the first step in order to find the adjoint of A, you swap the first and the fourth element. So you see the first and the fourth element, you swap it. So instead of having two, four, here is written as this, four, two. And then change the signs of the second and third element. This, these two elements are positive, a plus is understood and fronted. When you change the sign, it now becomes negative. So it becomes negative three, negative two. And this is your joint of A, your joint of matrix A, is four minus three minus two and two. These are the two steps that we use to find for the adjoint of our matrix. So you have the steps for each, you just need to follow the steps. You multiply every element inside the matrix by a half, or our next way of thinking of it, you put all the elements over a denominator. So you see four, put it over the denominator, which is two. Minus three, over, over the denominator, which is two. Minus two over two, and two over two. So put all the elements over the denominator. That is our, our next way, that is an easy way of, of thinking of it. So four over two, minus three over two, minus two over two, and two over two. So what's over the denominator is if the denominator is three, five, seven, what's over it is? Just put the numbers inside over that denominator. I'll show you why. If it is that you take a half and you multiply it by four, a half by four, four is the same as saying four over one. So you multiply the top, one by four is four, two by one is two. So you can make it just take the number and put it over two. So you don't need to do that for all. In any situation, 
To simplify this, just take each of your element and place it over a denominator. And my advice to you is to simplify it. You can write it as a decimal, you can write it as a fraction, but simplify it where simplification, you could, it could be simplified. In this case, it could be simplified, so we simplify. Four over two, we get two. Minus three over two, if you put minus three over two in your calculator, or if you do it mentally, minus three over two is minus one and a half. When placing your calculator, you're gonna get minus 1.5. Minus 1.5 and minus 1.5 and is the same thing. Minus 2 over 2, you get minus 1. And 2 over 2, you get 1. And this is the inverse. This is A inverse. A inverse would be this matrix 2 minus 1.5 minus 1 and 1. And how it is that we found this? You put 1 over a determinant, multiply by the adjoint. And the determinant was 2. The adjoint was just a rearrangement of the numbers. And to simplify, you put all of the elements over a determinant. So you put 4 over 2 minus 3 over 2 minus 2 over 2 and 2 over 2, and then simplify. And this is like around three marks in the exam to find the inverse of a matrix. So you can take note of this. This is the formula, how it is that you go about finding for the inverse of any matrix. Q is given as 4, 2. 1, 1. In order to find for the inverse of a matrix, the inverse of a matrix, Q inverse is 1 over a determinant multiplied by the adjoint of the matrix. So these are two things that you need to find in order to find for the inverse. So finding for the determinant of Q. The determinant of Q, according to the steps, you multiply the first element by the fourth element. So four is multiplied by one. Take away your second element by your third element. So two is multiplied by one. That is your second and your third element respectively. So four by one is four. Two by one is two. Now when you subtract this four minus two, you get two. Then you want to find for the adjoint of matrix Q. The adjoint of Q, according to the steps, you swap the first and the fourth term. So you swap 4 and 1. Instead of writing 4, 1, you write 1, 4. And you see the second and third term, you change the signs of those two terms. So instead of having positive 2, you have negative 2. Instead of having positive 1, you have negative 1. So just hold a second. Now we have the determinant, 2, and we have the adjoint. So it's just a matter of putting everything together. You want to find Q inverse now. So we put 1 over the determinant, which is 2, multiplied by the adjoint. The adjoint is 1 minus 2 minus 1 and 4. To simplify this, put everything over the denominator. So you put 1 over 2. Minus 2 over 2, minus 1 over 2, and 4 over 2. And simplify where it can be simplified. Some people would leave it as a fraction, like 1 over 2. Some would write it as a decimal. So you can write it as 1 over 2, you can write it as 0 0.5. Minus 2 over 2 is minus 1. Minus 1 over 2 is minus a half or minus 0 0.5. And 4 over 2 is 2. And that is what we got for Q inverse. Who got that answer? Me, sir. So, go back over. How you get the answer from it? I didn't get that. Which one? You got you get Q? So I get everything. Down to the 1 over 2, the minus 2 over 2, everything. But this answer, we put 0 0.5. Oh, well, I just write it as a decimal. So if you put 1 divided okay. by 2 in your calculator, yeah. 1 divided by 2 is the same as saying 0.5. Okay. Okay. Minus 2 over 2, 2 into 2 is 1. So you get yeah. minus 1. Yeah. Minus 1 over 2 is the same as saying, well, minus, well, a half is the same as saying 0. 0.5. So minus a half is the same as saying minus 0. 0.5. And then 4 over 2, 2 into 2 is 1, 2 into 4 is 2. So when mm -hmm. reduced, this is just a reduced form. So you all right. can just add a half minus 1 minus a half and 2. The decimal. Okay. Could have been written as a fraction also. So yeah, you you just didn't simplify it.
You will just say, you got half minus two over two minus one over two and four over no, two. So I simplify it, but when I simplify it, right? Yeah. I get for my first element, I get two. For the second element, I get minus one. For the mm -hmm. third element, I get minus two. And for the fourth element, I get 0 0.5. I don't yeah. know what I wrong. Oh. But I had everything before, just as how you have it there. It's just the final stages, yeah, 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 you didn't, yeah. You didn't match them. Bola, you get your chance. Looking at question one. Question one reads, A is equal to the matrix three, two, two minus three. Now we're taking it step at a time. Part A evaluate the determinant of A. So in part A, you want to find out the determinant of A. To find out the determinant of a matrix, what we do is that you multiply the first and your fourth element in the matrix, in the square matrix. So we multiply three by minus three, take away the second and the third element, multiply. So it is the difference of the product of the first and the fourth element and the second and the third element. So you, have, you multiply the first and the fourth element, the second and the third element, and then you subtract them. So three by minus three, take away two by two. And when it is that we do this, three by minus three, we get minus nine. Minus two by two, we get four. So we have minus nine, minus four, we get minus 13. So this is the determinant that we get when it is that we form the determinant of the matrix E. So remember the rules, the first element multiplied by the fourth element, take away the second element multiplied by the third element. And then you simplify and find the determinant. The, the determinant is a constant or a number. Part B, they want us to find the inverse, A inverse. So we know what the determinant is. The determinant is equal to minus 13. They want us to find the inverse, but in order to find the inverse, you need to find the adjoint. So the adjoint of our matrix, what we do is that we swap the first and the fourth element. So you see the first and the fourth element or the first and the last element, you swap that. So instead of having three minus three, you have it as written as minus three, three in that particular order. And then you see the Second and the third element, what we do to those elements is that you change the sign. So you see the, the second and the third element, this is understood as a positive two, a positive two, a plus is understood in front of these two here. So when it is I change any sign, you just change it from a plus to a minus, you alter the sign from plus to minus. So if it's a minus, it becomes a plus. If it's a plus, it becomes a minus. So we get minus two, minus two. So the adjoint of matrix A is a two by two matrix, that reads minus three, minus two, minus two and three. So what we do now is that you put everything together. So we want to find A inverse. To find A inverse is one over your determinant multiplied by the adjoint of the matrix. The determinant in this case is minus 13. So this becomes one over minus 13 multiplied by the adjoint. The adjoint is minus three, minus two, minus two, and three. So all we did so far, we found out the determinant, you found out the adjoint, and this is the formula we use to find for the inverse. You put one over the determinant, multiply by the adjoint. And when it is just simplifying this, each of your element inside of the matrix, you put it over your denominator. So if your denominator is minus 13, you put all the elements over that denominator. So it becomes minus 3 over minus 13. Then we have minus 2 over minus 13. Minus 2 over minus 13. And the last one is 3 over minus 13. And we could simplify this. Minus 3 over minus 13. Let me just change the color. This minus sign cancels with this minus sign. So what the fraction now we have, we have three over 13. 
This minus sign cancels with this minus sign, so we have 2 over 13 here. Minus sign cancels with minus sign, we have 2 over 13. And this last one, you can write it as this minus 3 over 13. Because the negative number as a denominator makes the entire fraction negative. So it could be read as minus 3 over 13 or 3 over minus 13. Same thing. So this is how we find the determinant. This is how we find the adjoint. I'm putting the determinant and the adjoint together, you would be able to find for the inverse. So this is finding for the inverse of matrix E. So the inverse of matrix A is written as this, A to the power minus one. That is how they write it. If they wanted us to find for the inverse of B, it would have been written, it would have been written as B to the minus one. So A inverse, what we got? We got the matrix three over 13, two over 13, two over 13 and minus three over 13. The next part, what they want us to find, Using A inverse, solve the simultaneous equations. Now, I want you all to look at this carefully. The simultaneous equations that they give us, they give us the equation 3x plus 2y is equal to 1. And the next equation, they have 2x minus 3y is equal to 5. In some questions, what they ask us, they ask us to write it in this form. Ax is equal to b. This form... A is a matrix, X is a matrix, and B is a matrix. But the matrix that A is, it consists of the elements that are the numbers in front of the variables. So you see the numbers in front of the variables, X, the numbers in front of X are 3 and 2. So you write 3 and 2. The numbers in front of Y are positive 2 and negative 3. So that is the matrix A is 3, 2, 2 minus 3. The matrix X consists of the variables. So if it is that you have the variable or the letter X first, you put X being your first element. And if it is that you have Y after, you put Y as a second element in this matrix. Equals to the matrix B consists of the numbers on your right-hand side of the equation. So the numbers on the right-hand side of the equation is 1, 5. So we have matrix A, which consists of the numbers in front of the variables. You have matrix X, which consists of the variables or the letters. And you have matrix B, which is the numbers on the right-hand side of the equation. For writing this like in this form, in some cases, they will give you two marks. All right, so we got two marks there. The next part, they would ask us to solve for the variables X and Y. That means you're solving, you're getting a value for X and a value for Y. If you look at the matrix A that we have here, with these numbers, 3, 2, 2 minus 3, if you look at those numbers, we, we use those numbers initially in the first part of the question. 3, 2, 2 minus 3. And we use that to find the inverse. And when we found the inverse, you got 3 over 13, 2 over 13, 2 over 13, and minus 3 over 13. So in most cases, you would have found the inverse in the previous steps. So you don't, you, don't, you don't need to go and find back the inverse here. So look at this step. This is the important step. To find for the variables x, y. So let me just give you a small note. To find for the variables x and y, we multiply a inverse which is the inverse of this matrix here. We multiply A inverse by the matrix B. So you need to find the inverse of this matrix on your left-hand side here, about a circle. You find the inverse of this, but we found the inverse of that in your previous steps. And when you find the inverse of that, you multiply by the matrix B, which is the matrix 1-5. And once as you multiply that, you'll be able to find out what X is and what Y is. So look at this magic. To find out X, Y, as I told you, taking the inverse of this matrix A here, and you multiply by the matrix B. The inverse of 3, 2, 2 minus 3, if you come across on this side, the inverse of 3, 2, 2 minus 3, when you worked out that, you got this. You got 3 over 13, 
So we got three over 13. We got two over 13. You have two over 13. And the last element is minus three over 13. So that is the inverse of matrix A. Multiplied by the matrix B. The matrix B is the matrix consisting of the elements one and five. So when it is you write it out like this now, it's just a matter of multiplying. When it is you multiply out this, you multiply row by column. So the first row is multiplied by the column here, which is one five. So multiply three over 13 by one. Three over 13, let me do it on top here for you. Let me do it in a, in a burgundy color. Three over 13 multiplied by one. One is the same as saying one over one. When it is you're doing that, just multiply the number by the top. Let me show you why. Because three by one, you get three. And 13 by one, you get 13. So if you just multiply the number by the top, that is the only thing that changes. So three over 13 multiplied by one, three by one is three, and you put it over the 13. Then you say two over 13 by five, two over 13 by five, two by five is 10, and you put it over the 13. So when you're multiplying a fraction by a whole number, just multiply the top of the fraction by the number, and just put it back over the denominator that you had. Then we go on to the next row. The next row is, 2 over 13 minus 3 over 13. You're taking this row and multiply by the column. So 2 over 13 multiplied by 1. 2 by 1, you get 2. Put it over the 13. Minus 3 over 13 multiplied by 5. Minus 3 by 5 is minus 15. Put it back over the 13. And now we can simplify this. What shall we simplify in this? Eh? The denominators are the same, so we add the numerators. 3 plus 10, you get 13. Put it back over the 13. 2 minus 15, 2 minus 15, you get minus 13. Put it back over the 13. And when you simplify this now, 13 over 13 is the same as saying 1 because 13 can go into 13 one time. And minus 13 over 13, you get minus 1. So what we did here in a nutshell, you take the inverse of A and multiply by the matrix B. So X will be equal to the first number. So X will be equal to one. And Y will be equal to the second number. Y will be equal to minus one. And this is how we are fine for the determinant, the adjoint, the inverse. And then we use the inverse to find for the variables in our simultaneous equation.